Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at something I was uh, reading over on Discord and uh, that was trying to identify aircraft without really having the proper tools to identify them. Now the reason I thought this would be kind of a fun scenario is that we can go over to Sam Simulate a little later on to kind of see how the technology has evolved a bit, making it a little bit easier to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. So I have myself a good old-fashioned ANTPS 43E, uh, obviously I use the TIPS 43 for everything, too bad. And right next to it I have myself a lovely little uh, Patriot battery here, ready to rock. It's pointing in this direction of course you can see we're chilling over here in the northern island of uh, new zealand today because you know why not so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pause things here and now we're going to allow our little radar here to see what's going on so the first thing i notice is i'm being jammed uh oh next thing i notice is as everything starts to populate as i see a bunch of bogeys start to appear on my screen here all right let's take a look what we got so first things first i got this guy way way over here in the corner i know nothing about him other than he's about 220 um, nautical miles away we've got these buddies here again i know nothing other than they're about uh, 200 nautical miles away all right let's collect a little tiny bit more information this is the ooda loop by the way so we'll speed up time just a little bit and we're starting to collect useful information here first thing i notice is uh, we were able to acquire these two they are flying awfully close together the other thing we notice is the one in the back seems to be traveling uh, accelerating trying to catch up to most likely his buddy so unless these are airliners flying in formation i immediately will flag these folks as uh, probably not going to be the most friendly around at the very least they need more investigation so we got over this guy right here he's at forty-five thousand feet traveling at 1400 knots well i don't know about you but i thought the concord is out of service here so i'm not really a fan of that one either so let's see we got this guy doing 480 knots at about 25 26 000 feet Oh, I don't know what to think about this one. We're going to have to do a little bit of research on this one to try to identify it. This guy over here, by the way, is still invisible, which is actually kind of bothersome because I'm being jammed right now. And usually when somebody suddenly drops off the radar and there's jamming involved, I'm definitely super duper duper suspicious. So I'm going to mark that guy as suspicious as well. This one is the puzzle. I am very, very curious as to what this could possibly be. If you're wondering, by the way, why it takes so long to get a refresh is because when the TPS-43 rotates, it rotates at about this speed, which means it takes time for for the radar to come all the way around again and uh, reacquire everybody. Yeah, if I had to guess, I'm, I was going to assume that's somebody who's in really, really tight formation. Like I said, airliners don't fly in formation. This guy, still a puzzle. Who flies at 480 knots at 25,000 feet? So let's do a little bit of research and see if we can try to figure out who this might be. So let's go grab my scenario platforms. We'll go ahead and uh, load up green team here and see if we can identify. All right, 25,000 feet. And what would we say the speed was? Uh, 480, 25,000 feet, 480. Nope, nope, nope. Definitely not one of those. Let's go take a look at the 74 here and see if we can get anything here. Band three, cruise speed, 320.6. No, okay, this is gonna get interesting. Let's grab a Learjet 36. Let's see here, 25,000 feet. Let's see here, 25,000 feet, cruises at 320. Nope. Oh, I think we're starting to get a conclusion here. Let the uh, radar continue to run here. C-47, Dakota, what? Um, let's see here. Oh, no, you can't even get up that high. Don't worry about that. Cessna 172, can't get that high. Uh, Long Ranger can definitely get that high. Fresco, what is this? Let's see what we got here. Let's see, uh, cruise speed at that altitude is 480 knots interesting so of course if he was a little bit higher up his cruise speed would be 480 as well but he'd be moving at 0.84 so ha huh. this one is a puzzler like a real 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 puzzle like i'm not sure how to classify that one i don't have enough information to classify this one right now now if we switch over to the other guys maybe we can find something else let's see here f14 uh, probably not a uh, flanker could be could be let's take a look uh, cruise speed at 25,000 feet. Let's see here. Cruise speed, cruise speed. Uh, oh, it's 480. It could be him too. Definitely not him. Uh, it could be him. And it's definitely not him because we've already identified him correctly. So this one is a bit of a poser. And uh, this is one of those classic situations that no matter how many resources you have at your disposal to identify him, we may not be able to identify him. Except... One thing that we do know is we know that he was picked up at a range of about 175 nautical miles. Now, I know you're sitting there going, well, 175 is a so. What's the difference with that? Well, believe it or not, whoever this guy is, his radar cross section has got to be in the size in such a way that at certain distances we detect him. If he was very small, he'd have to get closer to detect him. If he's very far away, we would have to um, we'd not be able to see him basically unless he was huge. So this guy, as suspicious as this one is, uh, chilling right now. Like I said, I'm a little kind of wondering a little bit about this what out distance do we detect this particular aircraft? If we picked it up way out here, he's probably big. If we picked it up way in here, he's probably really small. And we'll take a look at that a little later on in Sam Sim. So this guy, he's still up in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll let the scenario run a teeny tiny bit here. 
And we'll see if anything else uh, comes out that helps reveal us. Now, this guy I'm really suspicious about. Now, I know from reading the scenario platforms, there's only one guy in this whole group that would have a jamming pod available, and that's probably going to be the Sequoia 24, which I'm guessing that's who that's going to be here. All right, we got somebody new. Uh, we picked him up at an extremely long distance, which uh, suggests that it's probably something very large. All right, 487, 36,000 feet. I can tell you without almost not having to look at the scenario platforms that this is most likely going to be a civilian airliner pro probably the 7-4. Let's see here, 36,000 feet. Uh, let's see, 36,000 feet, here we go. 36 crews, 490.85. That would be 487, that is not 487, uh-oh. This is why we check. Let's see here, cruise speed, 480, that's 487 again. So this is a little bit more tricky. And we're gonna have to figure out who this guy is. Cruise speed, 440, it's definitely not the Learjet. And now we've already probably identified one of those. So this is actually kind of an interesting little one here. And again, it's another one of those scenarios where who travels at 488 knots? Let's go actually go take a look at the uh, scenario platforms again. And let's see if there's anybody in red team that could possibly be traveling at that speed. I think we identified those guys. I'm pretty confident that's who those are. Uh, let's see here. The flanker. Let's see the flanker. If we are at uh, cruise speed, let's say 480. No, nope, that's 480, not 489. Oh, it's changing speed here. And that's why we check it out. Let's go ahead and take a peek. It's definitely not him. We've identified him already. So he's doing a pretty high speed here. So I'm immediately instantly suspicious of this particular guy as well. All right. Somebody else has popped on real quick. Oh, we have this guy going 480. That's civilian. And we have this guy over here, like I said, who's traveling uh, 490, which is a little fast for most commercial airliners. So I'm definitely going to flag this guy as unfriendly as well. I guess it's not to say you can't travel that fast in a 747. Let's just say that it is unlikely. This guy is still a puzzle. I'm really not sure about that particular one. Um, normally in the real world, of course, if we have any doubt, that's when we send one of our interceptors to go take a look. And of course, there's no emissions. So let's go ahead and uh, flip everything around for just a second here and put on our God's eye view. Now, you're probably saying, oh, okay, so it was the civilian one. It's actually the MiG-15. So we, uh, we did a pretty nice job identifying that one, but notice it was still a military aircraft, and we could still pick it because of its unusual speed. Now, what we're going to do now is switch to the other team real fast and disable that jamming and see if anything changes as far as our scenario goes. So we go to green. Oh, sorry, we're going to go to red, actually, in this particular case. Boink. And we're going to grab this guy and tell him, stop it. Now, let's see if that changes what we can see here. All right, I'm starting to get some pings here right away because he's no longer blanking out that entire side of the world. And let's see what we can see here. All right, well, we know that this guy's actually uh, neutral here, which again, that was a trick question because of the fact he was flying at an odd altitude and he was in a, basically a demilitarized fighter. That's not fair. All right, so we got this guy at 36,000 feet, 440 knots. So remember, the only thing that travels that slow was the Learjet. So we're going to go ahead and tag him. We've got this guy doing 480 at 45,000 feet. Uh, there's not many that can do that. So, um, that, whoa, wrong color, wrong color. There we go. So we've identified him pretty well as well. Now, one thing I did not do in this scenario is I did not enable the emissions of the enemy targets. Now, have we had the emissions enabled, things are a little different. We'll take a look at that in a minute. I'm just going to give it some time and watch this guy go ripping over the top of our heads at full speed here. And we're just going to let it go, let it go. 15x is a pretty good speed. Everybody's closing in on us. I think we're pretty good so far as far as uh, doing a little bit of things. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, wait a minute. What if I told the fighter to fly the same speed as an airliner? I would say, you're smart. In which case, look for formations, look for emissions. Otherwise, you're probably going to have to send up an interceptor to go take a peek. And because you have a couple guys uh, kind of trailing in the back here, it's a C-47 and a Cessna 172, which, of course, we're not going to be able to identify, so they're pretty much right on top. Whoa, pause. Hey, something new just appeared. Let's check it out. Aha! These guys are traveling at 480 knots, which isn't recommended for airliners. They usually cap out at about 320 at that altitude and 2,000 feet. So without a doubt, this entire group is uh, probably not going to be considered a very friendly one. And I must promise you that no, it is not. So we'll let time I advance just a teeny tiny bit, let everybody kind of fly by us. And we'll see if anything else kind of comes out. Oh, we got something. Notice we were able to identify it immediately as a helicopter type. So what helicopter is this? Well, I can tell you right away what helicopter it is because of its speed. Helicopters don't travel at 145 knots typically, but there are a couple exceptions to that rule. So we definitely want to go investigate that real quick. So we'll go pop over to browse scenario platforms. We'll head over to red first. We'll grab ourselves an aircraft. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves a Hokum. Let's see what we got here. We are at 2,000 feet. Cruise speed at 2,000 feet is going to be 145 knots on the nose. Gotcha. Nice try. Nice try. So you're probably saying, but didn't you have like a UH-1 out there or something like that? No, I have a Bell 206. 
So let's go see what his speed is as well. So we go over to Bell 206, and we can see that his cruise speed is going to be 115. Like I said, 145 is uniquely fast for a cruise speed for a helicopter. Not to say you can, it's just unusual. Also, the altitude is tremendously low, which again, fly under the radar. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reopen the scenario real quick. Go ahead, I'm going to switch our team to blue team here. And we're going to make one, actually, we're going to start in red. We're going to go ahead and do something really dumb here. Control Shift F9. I'm going to go ahead and order everybody to go ahead and uh, turn on their radars. Now you're probably saying, oh, 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 oh. Why, 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 why would you do that? Why would you do that? Well, believe it or not, in the real world, civilian aircraft typically almost always fly with their radars on. Now, this is going to completely change your scenario. And I'll go ahead and undo this, which will help remind everybody how critically important it is to remember MCON. Of course, if you have an enemy unit that is exactly at enemy military speeds and it's not emitting and everybody else around you is emitting, that's usually a pretty solid sign that you're dealing with uh, somebody who's probably on the hostile side. One thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go down to my little sensor. So I'm going to add on some ESM just to make it a little bit easier. ESM, go do one of these, do one of these. We'll do generic ESM. We'll do 2010s. Why not? Boop, boop, boop. And watch what happens this time. So we go ahead and fire that up immediately. The uh, radar does its pass. Remember, it's a very slow rotating radar. And we've got ourselves all sorts of different units floating around here. Immediately, we can see this guy. He has a SLAR. Let's go ahead and change my contact emissions here. And we'll do, um, let's see here. That's pretty good. We'll do all emissions. Watch this. So now what happens is uh, when these guys emit, you'll pause. You'll get this little guy. Let's see, you have a fire control radar. You're hostile. Let's see, you have a fire control radar. You're hostile. Um, that's irritating. That's that MiG-15 we were telling you about before. You are a neutral. This guy over here, he's a bogey we don't know yet. Uh, these two are bogeys as well. So let's go ahead and unpause here and uh, see if anything useful pops out of any of their heads at any point as we detect them. Uh, let's see if we get a little bit closer. Give me some more emissions. Show me the emissions. Show me the emissions. I'm looking at this guy on my right now. Oh, we can see they're giving him a little blow. Oh, oh, generic Doppler radar. You were friendly. Give it a little bit of time. Give it a little bit of time. Generic Doppler radar. Generic Doppler radars are usually pretty safe. Give it a little moment. So we got some of them. We'll speed up time a little bit. This guy's not emitting anything, but he's at 45,000 feet. That's a little unusual. So by default, I would automatically be ultra suspicious of this guy because of the fact that he's flying so high, so fast, and he's intentionally not emitting. So you're going to get added to my little list here. Oh, you got a generic Doppler radar. This guy's not doing anything either. And his uh, speed, of course, um, suggests that it was going to be our Lear jet. We saw that one from before that we cheated. And we let everybody go by. And again, notice because of these radars up, there's his TFR, terrain following. But notice what type it is. It's a relief. It's a TFR. We can identify that exact emission. We can actually click on him and come over here and actually click this. Check this out. Push this button. It'll show you exactly who it is and why we got it. If we go to the contact report, it'll even tell us what the detected emissions are. And we can immediately use that to identify who this most likely is, even though we don't know it directly. So again, this is tremendously, tremendously useful. Now, you're probably saying, well, he said something about SAM Simulator a little while. While ago. Well, what's the deal with that? Ah, here we go. So what I was talking about before with SAMSIM is the fact that the SAM systems are actually very, very, very well modeled. Uh, they're so well modeled, as a matter of fact, that they give us the unique ability to basically identify things by their electronic emissions. So in this case, let's try that on. We'll go to GoTov. We'll go ahead and switch on the main radar itself. Let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've got a couple of different contacts pretty far away. This is an SA-5. I'm going to click on contact 1201. I'm going to go ahead and press this button to go ahead and try to manually acquire it. Now take a look. We know a lot of things about this contact. Uh, the first thing we know is by coming up here and looking, you can see what it happens if you try to demodulate the radar signal that comes back to us. We notice the fact that we're probably dealing with something that's a turbine because it has one very, very strong signal. It's not all kind of distributed like something with a propeller. The other thing we know is it only has a single engine because it's like that. So that's useful. The other thing that's useful is the fact that we know that particular target has an electronic uh, value, if you want to think about it, of about, uh, what do we got here? These are microamps or milliamps. I think, I think they're microamps, about let's call it 30 and a half. Now what we can do is we can now compare the range of that target, which we can quickly estimate here. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can see it. Let's see here, the range on that target is about, let's call it 60 kilometers. So actually we'll switch down to 100 on our little scale here and now see exactly what we can determine. And it looks like it is, uh, what do we got for a distance there? That's about, yeah, about 50, 60 kilometers. So if we take a value of 30 and we go to about 60, which is going to be about here, we can identify the fact that this particular target must probably be a fighter, which is going to be the bottom line here. Now, if it was a bomber, we'd be able to not only detect it at a longer distance, but we'd also expect to see multiple engine signals 
and we'd expect its total return to be significantly higher. Now, the interesting thing with this, which I always get a kick out of, is in order to actually attack it, you have to lock it into a gate that basically is uh, going to contain it um, at speed more than anything. It's basically one gigantic overkill, uh, I guess you want to call it, um, like a Doppler radar set, if you want to think about it another way. So let's go ahead and take a look at that other target that we had a second ago. So I'm going to go ahead and break my lock here. We'll go back over to this system here. This is kind of our big old battalion radar here. Cancel. We'll go ahead and exit out. So we'll go ahead and grab the other one. And we'll go grab this one real quick. There it goes. 1202. It's a different type of target. We'll go ahead and acquire it. And watch what happens. Notice our signal looks a little bit different because we're dealing with a different type of target. The other thing is electronically, let me go find the correct screen here, you can see that its return is massive, which tells us at its current range, we're dealing with a bomber even though we can't directly see it. Now you're probably saying, wait a minute, it doesn't look like a bomber, it doesn't have multiple engines. Well, it's actually a drone I'm shooting at here. It's not a bomber that I'm shooting at. If it was an actual bomber, you'd actually see the individual lines representing its different engines. So again, one of the neat things of this is they actually simulate that. Another point worth noting is if you actually take a look at my little radar screen down here, we can see physically which targets are much larger and physically which targets are much smaller when we're trying to lock onto them. That gives us a huge clue as to the type of target that we're looking at. So hopefully this uh, video was helpful as far as helping you with those kind of items out. Again, you have to put a bunch of things together. You really have to know the types of platforms. And obviously, if you start detecting fire control radars, that's usually a pretty safe bet. You're dealing with something dangerous. Enjoy.